Hey guys, what's going on? It's Nock. Welcome along to the practice session for the Bahrain Grand Prix in my F1 2017 career mode. Now, before we get started, we've got two brand new parts. We have got a new front wing main plane, which is going to hopefully improve front downforce by 1.08%. And we have also got a weight reduction in the chassis on the central under tray, which is an improvement of minus 2.31 kilograms, both minor updates. Now, following on from the Chinese Grand Prix, my car was looking a little bit worse for wear, but I decided that I would hop into the practice session without changing my car setup too much and just kind of, you know, use it rather than taking out the new power. However, that was a pretty big mistake. I'll, I'll admit it was pretty big. Um, as you'll see in. First up, I jumped into the track acclimatization test. Now, I haven't driven around Bahrain in F1 2017 yet, so it was my very, very first lap round the track. And as you'll see, I didn't exactly get off to a very good start in tall. Coming up to the final corner here, I applied the brakes too much, locked the front right, and we are straight off the track. So, um, yeah. Pretty good start to the lap, you will not agree. Later on in the lap, we got to the middle section. Now, I don't actually remember going around this section on the older game, so I think this was all pretty new. They did redevelop the track, but I, I took too much um, over, I was over the curb on the inside of that apex, and that put me wide onto the next corner, and we was spinning off the track there. We managed to keep it together pretty well for the rest of the lap, and um, we got round, uh, came across the line, and I think we ended up scoring about 290 on this lap. So, um, yeah, not too bad. But anyway, I was determined that I was going to focus, and we was going to carry on and try and improve next time around, despite missing the apex on the first turn there. So quite a mixed bag lap the next time around. Um, we only scored 235, which was uh, really down on our previous score. So um, it was starting to become apparent that I wasn't comfortable on these medium tires. A similar issue in China where I just could not get them to work. And as you'll see, I went massively wide and into turn one there again. You'll also notice through this middle section as well, I was, I don't know, I'm just very, very slow. I don't know if it's just power related, but you'll see Raikkonen is actually all over the back of me, all over this middle sector. I'm going very, very slowly. Uh, like I said, I, lack of confidence in the tires and the um, underperforming cars now becoming a pretty big issue anyway we managed to keep it together for the rest of the lap and um, as we cross the line in a moment you'll see that we didn't actually manage to improve and we didn't complete the test 290 was our best score so not being happy with the first run i decided to go out on the track acclimatization straight again but the second time i felt a lot more comfortable i don't know if the track had rubbed it in a bit more or what but i was still a bit slow here on the first lap i'll be honest i had ricardo all over my back end so um, I actually decided just to go very wide on this corner and let him through just to get him out of my way just so I wasn't holding up at the cost of taking a red marker. But I'm taking a lot more greens and purples in the second run, which is a lot more confident. And as we cross the line, we get a score of 320 in this run. So already we're almost hitting our target score. Very improved indeed. And um, carried on, carried on onto the second lap, even though I went deep into the first corner and locked up the brakes, totally missing the apex. But as we come up to the end of the second lap in this run, we are even closer because we have smashed our target. We've got 340 points at the end of this lap as we come into the DRS zone. But you'll see, I've only got like two, I think I've got one red zone. The rest are purples and greens. But we carried on again because I was confident, getting more confidence on the tyres, despite what I said earlier on about these mediums not really working with the hazards. See, I've really taken that corner very well this time, not gone deep into turn one like I have on the previous attempts. And our final attempt, you'll see we're racking up the purples as we come up to the end and we cross the line. We finish off the track the climb citation with 410 points. So yeah, very good indeed. Far more purples than anything else. Just that third, uh, fourth, sorry, uh, red marker, which is the slow one. Not having much confidence at all that I was actually going to make any progress, I decided to go out and do a quick qualifying test at the end of the session. Uh, we got the super softs on, but as you can see, we are already down and constantly losing time. The, the time delta keeps going up and up and up. Not a very good run at all. The power is really affecting us now. And as we get to like halfway through the lap, you can already see we're like two plus seconds behind. It really wasn't happening for me, guys. The power was just down. We were so far behind on our target time and our delta time that I just knew it was time to um, suck it up and put a new power unit in. As we cross the line, we are about 
four and a half seconds down. Our target time was a 137. We only achieved a 141.4. So here are the standings for P1. As you can see, rock bottom, but hopefully changing the engine will allow us to complete some objectives and push us up the standings in the remaining practice sessions. So before jumping into P2, it was apparent that we needed to fix the engine. So I spent um, a little bit of time upgrading some of the components. I just did the ones that were like critical or red. I left the um, orange ones because I don't want to actually use too many of my resources all in one go. Um, I have actually found out though since um, there was some issues with 25% races where the engine wear was being scaled incorrectly. So I think I've overworn my engines, but um, you know, we are with a lower team, so penalties can be expected in this um, career mode, I guess. But finally, it was time to get out on the track in P2, and I decided to jump straight into the tire wear test. And um, unfortunately, the engine upgrades didn't really improve my driving style because I was still going off quite badly at turn one, massively overcooking the braking point. As we move on further around the lap, you'll see that um, I am all over the place at the end of sector one. Just couldn't control it out of that corner at all. And, um, you know, these fast corners here, I got it all wrong again. Like I did in P1, I actually caught the inside too much over the uh, curb and spun on the exit. Seems that spinning off the track though was the least of my worries as this session was absolutely played with gearbox problems. I kept dropping gears, losing gears. I don't think I had one run in this session or P3 where I didn't actually lose a gear. And I think right here you can see I'm about six seconds down. But um, yeah, we've lost fifth gear at the moment. We soldiered on though and um, as you can see we're a good four seconds, four and a half seconds off the pace. So um, yeah, not a very good test at all. And losing the gear really throws you out of sync because you get used to the corners, what gear you're meant to be in, how many upshifts and downshifts you need to take for those corners. And um, yeah, it really throws you out. As you'll see here, as we take into turn one, I actually end up going down to second gear. Um, and then when we get on the power, we've got far too much power as we turn into the corner and we slide off the track. And I was just like, you know what? Let's done with this test. We moved on to the fuel test, but as you'll probably see here, we didn't really get um, turn one in any sort of better shape than we have been doing in the tyre test. So um, not off to a great start in the fuel saving test either. But as we come across the line, you'll see that we actually got um, pretty good fuel saving in the end. And uh, we was literally moments off. We had a bit of a sloppy exit on the end exit of the lap. But um, yeah, we were literally tenths of a second off completing this challenge. So um, I was quietly confident that even with... Um, any issues that the car may have that we was carrying, we could um, potentially crack this test and get a good score for it. Coming up to the end of the second lap, and we are making good time, but then we go slightly wide on the exit, which throws us out a little bit. But I think we've got enough in hand as the delta keeps going down and down and down. We race towards the line, and we just manage to get a good result on the fuel usage. So, um, yeah, happy days. Really happy about getting that indeed. Unfortunately, though, on our third run in the second sector, we actually lose seventh gear again. The gearbox issues are coming thick and fast. Like I said, I don't think we actually had a run where um, we didn't lose a gear in this session. And it just completely threw me into this corner. And um, you know what? I decided it was enough was enough. Let's just uh, move on to the next test. And the next test was a race strategy program. But unfortunately, we had a quite a big moment at the end of sector two, as you'll see, we took too much curb, too much speed, and we're off the track, flying it all the way across. And um, yeah, that pretty much played the end of this session. So as we wrap up P2, you'll notice we got quite a lot of work to do. We are sixth tenth off Stoffel van Dorm in 19th and rock bottom of the timesheets, a good nearly five seconds off the pace of the leaders at this point. And in preparation for P3, I thought I would check out the status of the gearbox since we had so many issues in that last session. But we're only at 62% overall wear, so I don't really know why we keep dropping gears so much. All right, it's over 50% worn. But, um, you know, these gearbox should last six races at least. So, um, I don't know. It Maybe it's to do with the scaling, the incorrect scaling of the 25% again, which hopefully will be improved going forward in the coming races as we add on new parts. But, um, yeah, I decided to soldier on with the gearbox anyway and um, try my luck once more. After a few setup tweaks, we decided to head out on the race strategy test. And uh, we had a bit of a rough exit, as you can see, at the end of lap one there. But we did manage to come across the line and um, beat our target lap time. Um, however, it wouldn't be too long before we had the issues again. And later on on the lap, 
we actually had another gearbox failure as we lost fourth gear, making things uh, rather tricky once again. After a couple of slow laps though, we did manage to get fourth gear back right at the end of lap three. So from lap four onwards, we could really put the hammer down and concentrate on where we was going to go. And I was starting to find my groove with this new setup and the track having it rubbered in on these soft tyres. Now that the car was slightly coming towards me, I had great confidence in it. And um, by the end of lap four, we put together a pretty good lap. We'd gone up uh, minus 1.6 seconds under the delta time. But we soldiered on again, had a pretty good lap the next time around as well. And we managed to take even more time out of it. It was 2.3 seconds um, quicker than our preset delta time. So yeah, things were looking up indeed at this point. On to the qualifying test, and um, we actually drove out and had an outlet. We had the issue with um, fuel mix. We actually lost a fuel mix, the rich fuel mix, which didn't help. And as you can see, we actually had issues with the cars behind. I was trying to stay out of the way of the cars, but they just kept following me and like getting in behind me. So I actually ended up holding up Hamilton there, unfortunately. I do apologize. But um, even with no rich fuel mix, we absolutely put the hammer down on our flying lap. We got a purple middle sector. Middle sector seems to be, uh, as with China, the one where I'm really dominant in. And um, as you'll see here, guys, we actually got a 135.761, which was an estimated fifth place grid qualifying for us. So, um, yeah, definitely feeling the rhythm. And that is also without the rich fuel mix, remember, guys. So uh, not too shabby at all. Next up was the tire wear test. And again, the gearbox decided that it would play silly buggers once more. And we actually lost fifth gear, which um, wasn't too bad because it's only the tire wear test. But we, we did pretty well on the tire wear test, I'll be honest. Um, we ended up getting a purple on it. So, um, yeah, we're pretty lenient on our tires. So there was just enough time left at the end of the session. I decided to go out on another track climatization test. But um, fortunately, we lost fifth gear. So um, not ideal. But as you can see, compared to our first track acclimatization, we have got mainly purple sectors in this one. And I think we actually managed just to pull it out of the bag as we crossed the line with the DRS. And we got a perfect um, hitting our target score exactly. So um, all in all, it was worth doing. And we finished the session there off in seventh place. So following the doom and gloom of the early session, we actually managed to have a pretty good end to it. Uh, we finished seventh, four places ahead of our teammate Roman Grosjean, and nearly a whole second ahead of him. So that was really good in my opinion. Um, a lot of gearbox issues, unfortunately, which we all need to um, hope and pray that it lasts out for qualifying and the race. But um, I'm feeling confident we have got a good car, a good balance, and um, I am looking forward to jumping into qualifying. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed. Make sure you stick around for the race. And if you haven't seen it already, make sure you go and check out the race from China, which is linked on the card. But until next time, I've been Nock. You've been awesome. Happy gaming.